Development Program for Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University and welcome to this Touchstones Progression Session, Enhancing Student Writing Cultures. This has been a major request that I receive from supervisors and the timing of this particular request is excellent. So I'm summoning the research from a recent book edited by Anne ruggers Gear, and the book was titled Developing Writers in Higher Education, a Longitudinal Study. Anne ruggers Gear is the director of the Gail Morris Sweetland Centre for Writing at the University of Michigan. Anne and her co-researchers implemented a study of how writing and writers change through an undergraduate degree and explores what works and what doesn't <laughs> when shaping writers through higher education. This is a timely study for all of us worried about universities, worried about the standards in higher education, and it is a corrective, if you will, of an earlier quite provocative study. Just over a decade ago, in 2011, Aram and Roxa produced a pretty edgy and controversial book titled Academically Adrift, Limited Learning on College Campuses. It takes a great deal of courage to question the standards of teaching and learning in our universities. Our current focus, of course, is on employability and graduate attributes rather than the intellectual standards that are being reached. Richard Aram and Josipa Roxka stated that the quality of undergraduate learning is no longer a silent fear amongst academics, but a public problem for policymakers, for politicians, and yes, employers. They presented a longitudinal study locating the barriers to learning in undergraduate degrees. So they saw, for example, the impact of students spending time on, quote, non-academic activities, end of quote, such as drinking and socialising, and that results in a lack of preparation for undergraduate and academic study. Quote, many students come to college not only poorly prepared by prior schooling for higher demand academic tasks than ideally lie in front of them, but more troubling still, they enter college with attitudes, norms, values and behaviours that are often at odds with academic commitment. End of quote. They summon the customary argument that students are underprepared on entry into universities and conduct little personal study once on the campus. But the authors then enact a knight's move. They state, quote, if one is to cast aspersions on student learning cultures that exist on college campuses today, one would do well to focus equal attention on the faculty cultures and orientations, end of quote. Blame for a lack of educational achievement is not loaded onto students. Instead, a spotlight is shone on us. As academics, our expectations, our preparation and our inability to lift students to the required scholarly standards. Aram and Roxka focus on the disconnection between staff and students, starting from the conventional but correct argument that doctoral programs do not help academics become effective teachers, let alone supervisors. Subject expertise, or what Narelle Hunter, Jamie Quinton and I have described as disciplinary literacy in a recent series of articles, is crucial to this discussion. But that is one component for the creation of a successful learning environment. What about the specialist teaching and learning and writing that we require in a higher degree program? The role of teachers in student learning is, of course, underplayed and undermined because we blame things. We blame schools. Students are blamed. And these are easy targets. A larger and more expansive engagement with this topic is from Christopher Newfield in his remarkable book, Unmaking the Public University. He tracks what has happened to universities in the post-industrial age. He describes what he's seen through his academic career, quote, intellectual and imaginative decline, end of quote. The failure rates, 
the lack of preparation for university and the disparities in degree completion on the basis of gender and race provide pretty disturbing reading. And I'll make the obvious, of course, post-COVID point. I've taught online since 1997, and we've seen money funneled to hardware and software rather than wetware. The rush to get materials online through COVID, the lack of engagement with those online materials by students, means that right now we have a generation of very underprepared students. And this is true for all disciplines, but I particularly worry for our students in the studio, lab-based and fieldwork methodology paradigms. The enthusiasm for educational technology has been the spine of most of our professional lives, I think, over the last couple of decades. And Cote and Alaha are clear, quote, the enthusiasm about the application of the new technologies in the university setting has clearly outpaced the empirical evidence regarding their potential to enhance academic engagement and learning outcomes. It is clearly a curious development that so many people are willing to let technology drive the curriculum when it should be the other way around, end of quote. Now, their argument is incredibly important to us in doctoral education because reading and writing academically is incredibly difficult. Aram and Roxa argue that the focus on access in higher education rather than expectations once students arrive on campus results in students drifting through university without a sense of why they're actually participating in learning. Aram and Roxa ask a key question and then they answered it, quote, how much are students actually learning? in contemporary higher education, end of quote. Instead of blaming students, their research looks to the scholarly expectations of us, of academics. And they found that 50, 50 percent of students in their sample had not enrolled in a single course that required more than 20 pages of writing in a semester and 40 pages of reading per week. Wow. So Aram and Roxa offer a clear maxim, quote, when faculty have high expectations, students learn more, end of quote. So the issue is how we, how academics understand and we activate these expectations, these motivations, these standards, particularly when we are considering the future of doctoral education. If students are underprepared in undergraduate education without expertise in methodology, epistemology, ontology, and they do not hold the disciplinary literacies or the academic literacies, then the standards in doctoral education must decline. And they must decline because much of the doctoral degree is doing the work that we expected to be completed by an honours capstone project or master's. This is, for me, the big area. This is the big threat. But let's look at the new research from Anne Ruggles Gear. Let's look and find something positive. Find options, alternatives and potentials. How do we improve student writing? Well, Gear led a multi-year study of 169 student writers who produced 2,406 pieces of writing with surveys, interviews and e-portfolios as part of the evaluative protocol. And there was a strong attention to naming conventions and that allowed, therefore, a clear and profound meshing of qualitative and quantitative data sets. The study also revealed the differences in writing between people who took a minor in writing, so three or four subjects, and people who did not. Gear took on the assumption that writing improves through an undergraduate degree. And she actually asks, what does better writing or becoming a better writer actually mean? She unpicks that phrase that we take for granted. We talk all the time about writing development. And she, in fact, found three parts to that phrase. So what is writing development? One, spelling and punctuation. So the error count. Two, disciplinary expertise. And three, the capacity to move through and manage writing challenges. This diagnostic is helpful for us in doctoral education, and these three parts align 
to create for us a writing development program. This book also reveals great subtlety in the use of technology for online learning. Their longitudinal study showed that when digital tools are used by writers, they enhance an awareness of the diverse audiences of writing. So, quote, audience awareness, end of quote, is enhanced by writing in digital environments. This is important as it grants what she describes as, quote, explicit attention to audience, end of quote. And that, therefore, enables our students and us as academics to understand writing genres. Their study also reveals challenges with instructor feedback. And this section of the study was completed by Emily Wilson and Justine Post. They showed that feedback from an instructor did not indicate, did not reveal that the students were learning why changes were necessary. Indeed, the dependence on instructor feedback meant that students were not learning why the feedback was necessary. Wow. So we see the consequences of all of this in doctoral education as students are increasingly dependent on the direct feedback from their supervisor. And I think, and we might talk about this, but I think tracked changes make that worse. I cannot tell you how many students now are simply accepting all, accept all track changes when the supervisor offers commentary on the thesis. And that's causing problems because when making those tracked changes, accept all, do the students understand why they are making those changes? The researchers recommend a strong focus on genre, writing genres. And this is important. The PhD is a genre. It is a mode of writing with particular characteristics. And when graduate student writers understand that a PhD is a genre of writing, then they realise that they must show, to quote Wilson and Post, quote, expertise in the discourse of community knowledge. End of quote. The key relationship that is shown in this longitudinal study is that students must enable the development between writing skills and disciplinary expertise. And at the moment, our universities are failing in the development of this relationship between content, method and epistemology. So writing and writing competence is working in and working with, quote, genre-specific communities, end of quote. Without this degree of subtlety, the students in this study only configured two domains of writing. There were two types of writing, academic writing and creative writing, and the students put, <laughs> put them in two different buckets. So again, the capacity for innovative genres to be created and reflexivity about writing modalities, all of that is blocked because for the students surveyed, they lived with a binary of academic writing versus creative writing. This separation is particularly significant, I think, and Ryan McCarty in this study demonstrated the benefits of students comparing writing contexts so that they're able to understand disciplinary communities by comparison. So this means a student reads a paper from biology and then reads a computer science paper, and then reads a sociology paper, and then reads a history paper, and understands writing genres through seeing the differences. Students gain from understanding and embodying the identity as a member of an academic disciplinary community. Put another way, what does it mean to learn to write like a microbiologist? That question is answered and enabled through participation in labs, research projects, journal clubs. These contexts enable a reflection on the very nature of scientific writing or social scientific writing or humanities writing or the productive post-disciplinarity that emerges when understanding how these genres can bleed. So for my academic colleagues listening to this session today, let's ask ourselves, how often do we teach in this way, overtly, how to write like a chemist? 
how to write like an historian, how to write like a social work practitioner researcher. I've done this work from first year, from first year undergraduates, for nearly 30 years, but I've done it in, let's be honest, a bit of a, an unsubtle, gothic kind of way. So in the first lecture of my first years, I put up a banned list of words and phrases in the first lecture of first year. And the reason I do this is I'm trying to block students from returning to easy answers and easy words and easy cliches and easy phrases. I demand, even from first year, that they reorganise their mind furniture. So some of the words I ban, and can I say it's a very long list, but some of the words I ban are everyone, everything, everybody thinks like this, most people, most people agree with that, mass culture. Now, I did that process to simply subvert and challenge their thinking. But the longitudinal research has shown that this was actually a pretty good technique, obviously delivered with more subtlety than I can manage. But these phrases that I ban are called generality markers. So always, never, everyone, no one, people. And a proxy for a student developing as a writer through a degree is that they're less likely to use generality markers. So they exhibit fewer generalizations, less certainty, more rigor, more evidence. The key final research outcome from this study for Gear was the recognition that, quote, writing can never entirely be mastered, end of quote. So we are all students of writing. But experienced writers have resources to enable the management of new writing challenges. So when we're confronted by unfamiliar writing tasks or events, something we have to do, we have the strategies, the patterns, the protocols, the resources, the practices to manage that challenge. Most importantly, experienced writers demonstrate multimodal expertise, building verbal and visual textual relationships. And that means that the lessons learned in one platform or mode are then applied to others. This is powerful. This is important. If you think about it, through our formal learning years, writing is segmented through primary school, secondary school, college, and post-college, post-university writing goals are rarely even considered. Yet today, more than ever, most people on most days complete writing tasks in their daily life because social media are writing media. Writing has never mattered more to a greater proportion of the population. And the findings offered in this longitudinal study demonstrated that there is a real gap, and can I say this is a huge problem in doctoral education, but there's a real gap between what a student say they're doing in their writing and what they're actually producing. So what they're saying they're doing in their writing and what they actually produce. In other words, students talk about elements in their writing, but they don't actually present those elements in their writing. But Gear and her colleagues show that there are specific interventions that make a difference in student writing. Creating a minor in writing through a degree has value, so a series of courses, professional development at a graduate level, offering strategies to work through multiple media environments, enacting multimodality, and using e-portfolios improves students' writing. And finally, sharing writing with peers, or as they describe it, quote, being a writer among writers, end of quote. That's a powerful strategy for improvement. For those of us in doctoral education, the advice is clear. Students improve through bespoke academic writing courses, but also improve enormously when academic writing is taught within a discipline. And yet... And yet, think about how rarely we produce sessions of our undergraduate curriculum, let alone micro or nano learning for our doctoral candidates, with titles like academic writing for chemists, academic writing for physicists, academic writing for criminologists. Instead, we summon assumptions and homology to hope our students learn something through feedback which this longitudinal study shows they do not. 
Therefore, let's make a decision as higher degree supervisors to talk overtly and clearly about academic writing, sharing academic writing through peer review, real peer review, reviewing by peers, creating an awareness of academic genres and an understanding of the audiences for academic writing. We talk about impact and engagement a lot. Both these attributes begin and often end with high quality, attentive, reflexive and responsive academic writing. So thank you for sharing your time and your expertise with me for this Touchstone Progressions session. Thank you for listening to Touchstones, our professional development program for graduate studies at Charles Darwin University. Music